Okay, welcome. Uh, tonight's uh, tonight's Shir Chabura, we titled Five Outstanding Points about Ramir Simcha uh, Zatzal of Davinsk. I'll tell you what I mean. Um, Ramir Simcha was related to by the people of his generation, first of all, in superlatives as an Hagon Hagadol Ha'ed Adir, the Sar HaTorah. Uh, he was also treated as somebody who was head and shoulders above the generation. Um, again, one of the most prominent uh, Tamil Chachamim of that generation is Reb Chaim Brisker. And we mentioned this last week, Reb Chaim Brisk used to, uh, used to, before he, before he was going to meet Reb Meir Simcha, so he went over the whole Sefer, so he would, make sure he had what to talk about. You know, Rav Chaim Brisker's book on the Rambam is, is legend. And, uh, and when, when the Orsamech on the Rambam came out, so Rav Chaim Brisk went over the whole thing so that if there's anything that's in there, he's going to leave it out of his Hidushi Rav Chaim Alevi ala Rambam. But that's only uh, in Lambdas. But in, in, in being considered like a... I don't know, a world-class tzaddik and, and person of vision uh, and thinker. So, so Ramir Simcha is really that kind of a person. So what I did is I went through um, the biography of Rav Meir Simcha, the one that I found uh, which collected a lot of firsthand information, was written by somebody named Rav Zev Aryeh Rabiner uh, Zatzal, who lived in lived in Israel in the, um, in, uh, he was, uh, I think, as far as I know, um, you know, a contemporary, a younger contemporary. Um, I actually heard about him years ago because I had a book called HaShabbat Ha'am Ve'aretz, um, which, uh, I just picked up because it was on the table of things in the uh, Yeshiva University Library that they were no longer going to be in the library. So I, I read it. it was a beautiful book. Um, now, <clears throat> so what I did was I pulled out five things from the biography. Well, four things from the biography and a fifth thing, which is a eulogy uh, of Rav Meir Simcha. And in all of them, you just see somebody who is. Uh, extremely, and then fill in the blanks. So without further ado, I'm going to share um, the, uh, the PowerPoint, and then we'll, we'll follow with that. Um, Okay, you should all see five outstanding points of Rav Meir Simcha of Devins, that's all. Oops, I forgot to edit out <laughs> Clinging to God, which is always good to remember, Clinging to God, but that's really from last week's title. Um, the, uh, this was the, this graphic uh, is based on the, the first Gemara I like to discuss. Ana lo chachima ana, velo chaza ana, velo yichida ana, ala gamarna v'sardarna ana, v'chein morim b'veit midrash ha'kavasi. We'll we'll see that in a minute. Here's the biography, the first page of the biography that I quoted. Um, now, there's a cryptic gemara. There's a discussion between uh, between Amoraim, and one of the Amoraim says, instead of just you know stating his opinion. He states it in a in a way with which which seems to have a lot of flair. I'm not a chacham. I'm not wise. I'm not a person of vision. I'm not unique. Rather, I learned. I ordered the stuff. You know, I rem I I just I just collect things that people say and and uh, and they paskin in the base madrash like me. And sure enough, Rashi on that. Annette Gemara explains, 
And if you follow the, the little pointer, you'll see where he says this. These are all selections from the book. Um, Rashi says, again, this is it's a it's a Gemara about about where the discussion about when to make Kiddush. And um, this uh, this particular piece is is from uh, this particular piece is from a uh, uh, a rav who whose name was Reb Chaim Shlomo Kum who wrote a sefer called Chaye Shlomo and in it he quotes uh, a Rav Avram, son of the Rav Aaron Yoshua Shapiro of Bialystok, that's Al of Bialystok, uh, which was the place that Rav, Rav uh, Meir Simcha spent a, poor, uh, a, a chunk of his early life. And he quotes Rav Meir Simcha, who explained this, uh, uh, this cryptic Gemara in the following way. So first of all, the cryptic Gemara. Um, in this discussion about uh, when to make Kiddush, so... So the Amora says, for some reason I'm blanking out on the Amora. He says, I am not wise. I'm not a Chosa. I'm not a, I'm not a person of vision. I'm not unique. I'm not alone. I'm not one. Rather, Gamarna Vesadarna Ana. I learn and I order the stuff and I organize. And they paskin in the base rendish like me. And he, and then he says his, uh, his, his halacha, there's a difference between Kiddush and Havdalah, Iyuli Yoma, when it comes to bringing in Shabbos, Komadam, Akdamin, and Le'adim. The earlier, the better. Where there is Afuke Yoma, when it comes to taking out Shabbos, Machrin, and Le'adim. The later we make Havdalah, the better. So if there's a progression of different brachas, when it comes to Havdalah, you're going to do Havdalah as late as possible. Okay. Um, so Rashi explains, I'm going to pull out my Spotlight. I'm not wise. Lo amina lo midati. I'm not saying this from my own. This is not, I'm not a big chacham. I'm not making this up. Velocha ana magid. I'm not a, now, I don't know exactly what Rashi means by magid. Uh, is this the magid like? getting some uh, message from above, uh, like the Magid of, uh, of Rav Yosef Karo, who was an angel that, uh, that uh, taught him things. I don't know. Velo yechida ana. Otherwise, it would mean Magid. Uh, maybe a Magid like was used in, in later, later language. I don't know. Velo yechida ana. I'm not one or alone, says says uh says Rashi Lo Amina la Mishmei de Gabra Echida. I'm not th- saying this in the name of a, of a lone opinion. This is not a Das Yachid. Ella Gamarna Kachamati by Shiva. I learned this. I heard this in the Shiva. Visadarna Ana and I organize the material. Misadar Shmuel Lifne Rabotai Tamid. I'm always uh saying over the things that I learn in an organized fashion in front of my Rabbeim so you can trust me. So uh, Ramir so that's what Rashi explains. Rashi and the Rashbam explain it in a very straightforward manner. But Ramir Simcha says, in order to really understand what's behind this Gemara, you have to look at a previous Gemara. Earlier on Kuf Beis Amud Beis, this Gemara is on Kuf He Amud Beis. Uh, but on Kuf Beis Amud Beis, it says the following: When Yom Tov comes after Shabbos, there is a five-way argument, Rav, Shmuel, Rabba, Levi, uh, Rabbanan, oh, six-way argument, sorry, uh, and, uh, and Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua and Hananya. Um, is it really six? Six-way argument, sorry. There's a six-way argument about what to do. Rav says, Yakna, Yikne, Yain Kiddush near Havdalah, Remember, it's Yom Tov that comes at a Motzei Shabbos. Uh, Shmuel says, Yayin Ner Havdalah Kiddush. 
And Rabba says, Yayin Havdala Ner Kiddush. And Levi says, Kiddush Ner Yayin Havdala. And Rabbanan say, Kiddush Yayin Ner Havdala. These are all the permutations coming out. And Marta says, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, that's Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah, Ner Yayin Havdala Kiddush. And Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yossi, quoted his father, Rabbi Yossi, who said, in, sorry, I, I was wrong. Um, Marta quoted Rabbi Yeshua one way. And Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yossi quoted his father, who quoted Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah in a different way. And he said, uh, Ner Havdala Yain Kiddush. Now, you'll notice, said Ramir Simcha, that in, in that particular Gemara, that Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananiah and Shmuel and Rabba all put Kiddush last. Kiddush has to be last. And Levi and Rav and the Rabbanan hold that Kiddush is first. If you look in in um, in Rav and Levi and the Rabbanan, so Kiddush comes before Havdalah. Um, <clears throat> now, let's look at these different people. Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya was a chacham gadol me'od, even b'mili demal alma, even in, in uh, this worldly matters, what we would say secular wisdom. And Caesar told him, amrisu da chachmisu tuva. They say that you're very wise. So Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya was characterized as a chacham. He was also the one who had the debate with the Chach, with the Be'atuna, with the with the wise men of Athens, who were considered the great Chachamim of of uh, of Yavan of Greece, what we call Greece. So, Rabbi Shimon Chanani was a Chacham. Shmuel was called was a Jose. Shmuel. Well, uh, one of his, uh, one of the famous quotes of Shmuel is, "Nihirin li shvili deshmaya kishvili denerda." The the paths of the heavens, meaning all the stars and all the constellations, I know as well as I know the streets of Nerda, which is where he lived. Rabba Mar Nachmeni. So he said again with a self uh, awareness that I am Yachid Benegoyim, I am Yachid BeAlos. Meaning, when it comes to Maseches Benegoyim, when it comes to Maseches Alos. I, I, I know them. I know them well. I know them. I'm I'm unique in my knowledge of those areas. Uh, so Ramirez Simcha says, you can only understand this Gemara by plugging it into that other Gemara, which is Vata Yuvnu Advar. Now everything is now is understandable. Lo Chachima Ana. What does that mean? I don't hold like Rav Yeshua Ben Chananya, who is called the Chacham. I'm not a Chosa. I don't hold like Shmuel, who was a Chosa B'Kochavim. He was somebody who saw all the stars. Lo Yachida Ana. I'm not a Yachida Ana. I'm not one of the one. I don't hold like Rabbi Bar Nachmani, who was Yachid Ben Agayim Be'Aldos. Ella. However, what am I? Now, the order he chose, you'll notice, even though it's different than the order in the Gemara, it's according to their. Uh, chronological order. First, Rabbi Shuman Hanani was a Tana, and then Shmuel was the first generation of Mora, and Rabbi Menachmeni, who came, who came uh, uh, generation, two generations after. But, Ella Gamarna Visadarna Ana. What does that mean? Gamarna, uh, the, uh, in the Gamarna Sanhedrin, it says, there, that when the Gemara, when the when the expression lemedim lifnei chachamim is used, that's referring to Levi, who learned from Rebbe. And Sadarna, that's referring to Rav, who was the Resh Sidra Babavel, whose name was Abba Aricha, and that's Rashi says Resh Sidra was the Rosh Hashiva. That's the Rabbanan. They all hold Kiddush comes before Havdalah. So, um, now, in order to, it seems so obvious after he says it, but 
you you really have to know have to have to know like all of shots and have processed it to be able to plug it into those names and be able to plug in that Gemara to this Gemara. I just want to point out something, by the way, uh, about Vikias. Um, once heard from Rav Ruben Leuchter, who's actually speaking to the Chappelle's Rebbein, and he said, Vikias is, and I hope I'm quoting correctly, if I'm not misquoting, so it's, you know, blame it on me. Uh, it's a, it's an accessible body of relevant knowledge. And so, Mayor <laughs> Simcha was able to, he was able to know that this Gemara, who's referring to the, the, Chachima and the Chosa, et cetera, et cetera, is referring to that other Gemara over there, but only because you know all those Gemaras all over the place. Um, now, that's one of the, I, I brought that as an example of, of simply how his uh, broad knowledge of Torah allowed him to plug it in, to come up with uh, something which unlocks a cryptic Gemara. Um, Rav, uh, Ramir Simcha's, one of Ramir Simcha's most famous pieces is a long essay which appears in his parish on Bechul Kosai, where he describes the process of, of, of Golas. And uh, it's in the Tochacha, it's in the rebuke the, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives Am Yisrael in, the, in, in Parshas Bechul Kosai. And uh, it discusses <clears throat> the importance of retaining cultural independence uh, and the importance of retaining a connection with Eretz Yisrael uh, when, in, when in exile. And um, the, the um, Rav Zebra Arya Binner here uh, you know, telescopes it. Uh, just, just you should see for a moment. Let me just show you the. Um, let me just show you this. Just a moment. Um, um, just a moment. Take a minute or two. Um, yeah, here it is. This is uh, this is that uh, famous piece. Um, it begins on the on the Vaf Gam Zos Biosam Beretz Avim Lo Me Astim Legalos Belogi Al Tim Lechalosam La Febri Seed Tam Ki Ani Hashem Lo Kechem That Hakadosh Baruch Hu Never Forsakes the Covenant. I there are times when Am Yisrael seems to be abandoned by Hashem, God forbid, but he describes uh, how how the the persecutions of of Golus are are part of of God's covenant with us, and he describes the process of how uh, Yaakov Avinu was very careful to make sure that Am Yisrael would always retain their connection to Eretz Yisrael and retain their connection, their, their cultural uniqueness. And this was part of what enabled Am Yisrael, despite the fact that they had uh, uh, descended uh, religiously, spiritually in Egypt, but still, they, they retain their unique uh, culture, their names, their, their clothing, their language was, was, um, was preserved. Um, 
Rameer Simcha in this piece describes how when Am Yisrael goes to a certain place in the, in the Golos and they eventually uh, become at home where they are. Let me just uh, pull out a couple of places here. That they'll be in a certain place for 100 or 200 years. Comes a, a, a storm. It will spread out its, its, uh, its waves. It will destroy, it will ruin, it will, it will another word for destroy, it will, it will blow away without, uh, without mercy. Mercilessly, until they are scattered and alone. And they run away to a far place. But then they get together. They'll be once again a, a, a nation, a group. Their Torah will grow. Their Chachma will be, will be successful. Until they forget the fact that they're they're strangers in a strange land. They will think that this is the place where they're from. And then they stop. They stop looking forward to God's salvation and God's spiritual salvation at the proper time. And then, but then comes another storm that's even stronger. And it, in, a, in a loud voice, in a, in a noisy voice, it says, Yudiata, you're Jewish. Umisam Chalaish, who made you into a person? Lech Lecha Leretz Ashaloyadata. Go to a land um, which you don't know. And then he says, Achayachlif Matzava Israeli, Vikiumo Baami, Kasherina Maskil Yerebis, Efer Debra Yamim. And you'll see this in history, in Jewish history, that this is the way. Jewish history flows. What's going on? And this is for two reasons. One, lekiuma data amiti v'torato lekiuma oma. It's to keep the religion and to keep the nation. Why? Ki kasher yanuach Yisrael ba'amim. When Israel will be at rest in the nations, yafriach v'yigdal torato fil pulo u'banav yasu chayil yitgadru neged avotehem. That the that the later generations will 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 increase their their learning their pilpul their uh, creativity. And this this applies to human wisdom. Where later are, are able to come up with, with increased wisdom. Like we see in every generation. That's not the case for the divine uh, wisdom that comes from heaven and its source is not on land. In Eretz Yisrael, a later Beitin was able to overturn the ruling of an earlier Beitin. And we pask in the Raman Paskins according to a number of different Gemaras, that if, when it comes to something that is learned out, Misvara, a later Beitin is able to, even a later, a smaller later Beitin is able to overturn an earlier Beitin. And, um, let's skip the rest. Um, and, <clears throat> but in Eretz Yisrael, beside that, in Eretz Yisrael, there was always a divine spiritual appearance, presence. Milvad Mikdash Rishon, Shashar Alei Amaruach, in the first temple, the Ruach HaKodesh rested. There were Nevi'im and Bnei Nevi'im and, and Bali Chochma Vatara Mokshara. There were these gatherings of wise and pure people, like the Rambam writes in Hilchos Yezodi Torah. there was the Urim Betumim, even in the second Beis Amigdash, they would draw Ruach HaKodesh 
there was a divine revelation uh, that the earlier generations Oh, here we are. Lo kim bagula. This is not in the exile. Shenit ma'ita kibutz vasefa belimad Torah. Learning dwindled. They weren't able to learn the way they were in the exile, like they were in Eretz Yisrael. And that's why a base team, a later base team. Like the Ramam says in his introduction to, men, to, Mish, to the Mishnah Torah, can't come up with a new Dindra Bonam. There's no prophecy anymore. And Mechitza Shel Barzo Mafsekes Bena Yisrael Aviyam Sheba Shamayim, there's this uh, iron wall between Israel, like the Gemara says. By the way, everything here I'm using Rev, Rev Cooperman's uh, footnotes. He's got, he's got sources to back up everything here. This is the nation, this is the way of this nation. That when they when they enter a strange land, they're inam bnei Torah, kasher nidal dulumin atzarot ve'agzerot ve'agirush. They are um, they are not uh, they're not a a uh, Torah community because they are uh, dwindled because of their troubles and the and the, the Gentile decrees and expulsions. There's a desire, the divine spirit once again is aroused, and then they learn, they do wonderful things, and they learn, and like Torah is renewed once again. What will people do who is who are trying to be to come up with something new? Well, Yevaker Berayon Kozevet Asher in Chilo Avotenu Yishayer Chadashot Beshkoach Mahayalu Matobit No Dedu Biyamat Laot. So, so they start uh, doubting and questioning. Uh, and then people say things like Sheker Nachalu Abateinu is all false and a Jew sometimes Bichlal Yishkach Mach Tzabto V'yechashev Lezrach Ra'anan Ya'azov Limudei Dato Limod Lashonot Lolo Ya'lif Mikal Kalta V'loi Lif Mitakanta so in an attempt at uh, coming up with some new Chiddush so they 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 end up forgetting their their source, they end up feeling a comfortable citizen of where they are. They desert learning their religion. They learn all sorts of uh, foreign languages. And I see this is already uh, uh, relating to his, uh, his time period. They, and they learn from the bad things in the culture and not the positive things in the culture. And now here are the lines. This is the line that got everybody uh, uh, astounded. Yachshov ki Berlin hi Yerushalayim. They think now he's 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 referring directly to 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 German assimilation. They will think that Berlin is Jew, is Jerusalem. And uh, I listened to a shir by a friend of mine. Uh, Yonatan Shai Friedman, uh, Rav Yonatan Shai Friedman. So he 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 reminds us of a quote. They had a slogan uh, that Berlin is our new Jerusalem, and we are Germans of the Mosaic faith. You did like the. Uh, Bad stuff, but not the good stuff. Now, that's the line. The only problem is that line itself would be a a, uh, a sharp critique on on German Jewish 
culture in his time. But then he goes on and he says, Az yavu ruach then, then will come, this is in the future, a, a stormy wind. Yakoroto migizo, it will uproot it from its trunk, from its from its uh, where it's planted. And then it will place it somewhere far away. Then he'll know that he's that he's a stranger. Like the Avos always preserved their knowledge that they were strangers. Lishono uh, Svat Kochenu. And he'll know that our real language is our holy tongue. And these foreign languages, they come and they go. And his real core place is the is, is Israel. And the real consolation is the consolations of God's prophets. That prophecy about, about uh, Yishai, about David ben Yishai in the, in the end of, of Days the Mashiach. Uvetiltulo Yishkach Torato Umkau Pilpola as he's running around from place to place that he's moved around, he forgets his Torah, it, its depth, its pilpul. Visham Yanuch Ma'at, then he's gonna rest a little. Yitarer Beregesh Kodesh, he will be aroused with a holy uh, emotion. Uvanav Yosifu Omets, his children will will put in some some effort. Ubachurav Yasu Chayav Torat Hashem. And then the young people will will work hard at learning. Itgaru lipshat Torah b'zeagavul, and they will they will try to. Uh, I think here it's, it's like he says here lafit to that Torah should be pushed it and spread out. Asher kvar nishkacha that was forgotten. Uvazeid kayim biyechzak biyekayim biyechazek omets. I'm, I, I apologize, I don't know what that is. Let's see if the footnotes help me. I didn't check this out. Oh, he quotes it. Um, Yeah, this is actually uh, uh, an important historical change that it's talking about uh, taking money for uh, people who are clay coated, people who are who are teaching uh, um, uh, learning rabbanim. So uh, he writes. The uh, the Orzerua imata tevatelahem. If you will stop this, negate this, migva magvat purim and nidvat simchat Torah, nidvat chatanim, all these different donations, collections that are to support them. In Yevrov Makomotsha, but Poland, Russia, but Hungarin, in most of these places, Poland, Russia, and Hungary, she ain't shem lom de Torah mitoch toch kum, where there's no lom de Torah, the that. Uh, because of their their poverty, and they and they and they hire somebody who knows a little bit when they find somebody. He's a he's a he's a posek. He teaches their children. And they and they and they promise them about all these different collections. But if you stop it, they're not going to be able to uh, pay for it. I don't know what that means. They won't have any Torah. They won't have any Tefillah. They won't have any Posek. Okay, so he writes, maybe even if you if you go back, I'm worried that people will uh, hear what you initially said. And Okay, fine. Now, um, Rabbi Nisun and Nisiyas Beistin was able to annul the Gzera and Shem and Nachri in Eretz Yisrael. Not sure if there are later examples of such. Meaning, the latest examples of annulling an earlier Gzera by a, by a, by a Beistin? Yeah. Yeah. 
By the way, just you'll see this material uh, in Hilchos Mamrim of the Rambam, and uh, uh, parenthetically, that's also where we understand through the Kesev Mishnah on that Rambam uh, why it is that Amoroim don't argue with Tanoim, and why it is that after the Gemara we don't argue on the Gemara. Um, back to our topic. Um, so that is uh, uh, the second very uh, outstanding thing about um, about Ramir Simcha. Um, his his uh, somewhat prophetic words about Berlin and Jerusalem. Now. Uh, there was a rub from Hungary in Friedlander who said that he was uh, in a library uh, of the, which he claimed was from the, the, uh, the brother of the uh, Knesset Zagadola, Rav Ben Benisti, and that he uncovered the Roshalmi on Kodshin. And uh, there had been hints from the Rishonim that there's some Yerushalmi on Kachim that was around, but we know we don't have it. So came this, uh, this Rabbin, Tuf Reish Samech Zion, that would translate into 5667. Well, now it's Ayin, now it's Pei, uh, and that was uh, 67, so it's 113 uh, years ago. 113 years ago. Um, so he came out with the Yerushalmi Kachim. So it was a big deal in the Jewish world because there were those who said, wow, this is it. And there were a number of, he went around with his, with his uh, Sefer and uh, there were a number of Rabbanim who, who wrote us comments for it. Um, there were a number of Rabbanim who smelled something strange. Um, now, a number of the 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 highest echelons of the rabbinic world got involved involved in this particular issue. Um, the Ger Rebbe, the Sachachover Rebbe, the Avni Nazer, uh, Rav Meir Don Platsky, who was one of the main players in this, uh, Rav Meir Yechiel of uh, Ostrots, I think, um, uh, a Rav in Rotterdam. Uh, but the Ridvaz, uh, who, who himself wrote a parish on the Yerushalmi, uh, and one of the key people in this was Ramir Simcha of Devensk. Ramir Simcha, uh, he claimed it was a forgery. Um, and I'd like to share just a little bit of a letter that he wrote uh, about this Yerushalmi. Uh, let's pull out my pointer here. Um, Shalom Rav, he writes, this is to the Rav of Radardam. There was a, um, there's a, uh, a, a, a work called Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim, which was written by Ramir Dan Platsky. You might be familiar with him as the author of Kli Chemda. And uh, he writes uh, uh, about he collects all the proofs that this Yerushalmi was not authentic, that it was, that it was forged. Uh, I will not go into the proofs that it was forged, but just uh, uh, take a little bit from Rav Meir Simcha's uh, letter. Shalom lo l'cholomot mistofafim b'tzilo, mikir v'lev hineni noten lo toda u'bracha ala sherechil l'farsim aziuf mi Yerushalmi kodshim. Thank you and bless you for starting to publicize that this Yerushalmi Kachim is a forgery. Asher Onmat Yikadesh Bakli, that's a poetic language or a rabbinic expression that when uh, uh, things in, in, uh, in the Beis Amikdash world, so they sometimes get Kedusha when they're inside a Kli. So he's 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 worried that uh, that when the book spreads, it will it will gain acceptance. Uh, he said, I, I 
I read I read part of it. Raiti ki kvot Torah ha Torah ha gadol. I think that's what he's saying. Uh, basically, uh, you gila ziufe aigrot vayirushalmi beatzmo. You discovered yourself the 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 forgery. Kol ragil be Yerushalmi. Anybody who's re, who's who's accustomed to the language of the Yerushalmi, makir ki umazuyef knows that it's forged. Forged. Ve'ino no derech Yerushalmi klal ladak take be mishnah be diktu ke abavli or the palpel ala mishnah harbe. It's not the way of the Yerushalmi to to have long. Uh, uh, detailed discussions of the language of the Mishnah, and they have a long, that's not the style of Yerushalmi. Umalukat mihavayu sushmiyo salariv, vitospos, ubahag, bimaleches uman, zaifan. And he collects all sorts of uh, quotes from the Riv, from Tosos, from the Bahag, and it's a crafty work of uh, a forgery. Umachnis li Yerushalmi, loshonos Yerushalmi, asher nilkatu bumochol. There's a number of, of Yerushalmi expressions that are in his mind. Uh, and then he quotes some of them, Kedain Asi Chagai, da da da. Ukiyotzi Baharbe Yotermi Dai. Venodaho Lano Shamotse Loor, whom he lead the ear Bishkenkovitz, Plach Vitebsk, Umirusia Yatai Egelaze. This golden calf came from Russia. Um, the um, so uh, again to be able to authoritatively say that a a work is a forgery, so you have to know. Um, and there was some I I I'm not even going to mention the names. There was some extremely great. I, I saw an, a name of of one of the extremely great Gadole Ador. Uh, of Galicia that was that was that gave a, a askama, a positive askama. Um, so, uh, a couple, three more points, and then we'll end. Uh, there was a there was a Jew Jew from Davinsk who sent his son to Eretz Yisrael. The child was doing well in the yeshiva, and he was sending letters back, and and uh, and they heard a lot. They, it sounded like everything was great, and then for a number of weeks, they didn't hear anything from their son. One of the nights, the mother dreamed that the windows of their house had fallen out of their frames, and she woke up scared because they were worried that something happened to their son. They they the the morning came. The, the, the parents ran to Rav Meir Simcha and they told him about the dream. Rav Meir Simcha smiled and he said, Light goes through the windows. But if you remove the windows, even more light is going to come through the windows. No but everybody knows <coughs> excuse me, that when there's a tenoim, meaning when a couple gets married and they write the tenoim, they write the, the document about the agreement about what's going to be after they're married. So there is a custom to break a break a, a kli. Halom, halom ha'im mar'e efo ki made lavol This dream means that the son is going to get married soon. They were so encouraged when they left from Meir Simcha's house. A few days passed. They got a letter from their son, that he mentioned his, his, uh, his, that he got engaged. And he apologizes for the letter not getting there. And this is all Chacham Adif Minavi. Let me just end with a hespin on Rav Meir Simcha uh, from a Rav Tzvi Hirsch Dachovitz, who was a Talmud of the Chofetz Chaim, who came to the United States, and he was a Rav in, in, um, in Brownsville for, for decades. And one of the uh, <coughs> excuse me, leading Rabbanim in, uh, in Orthodox Jewry in America in the... Um, 20s, 30s, 40s. He passed away in the early 50s. Um, 
he uh, he was a great orator, uh, and uh, he has a beautiful hasbid on Ramir Simcha, where and I just want to end reading this, and then we'll 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 close. And here you get a picture of the of the greatness. Bechin Rabotai, Gama Nifter Rabban Shel Komenei Agola, the one who has passed away, the leader of the entire exile. Shanu Maspidim Otokayet that we are eulogizing him now. Mochiach Bishma again. This is a whole long hesped, but through through his name, which was given to Shenita No Bakrai, that was given him so to speak by accident. At Amitat Shitatosha Rabbi Meir the Havadayek Bishma. It proves Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir of the Talmud's own Rabbi Meir of the of the Mishnah, his approach that the, in the Agadah says he was Medayek Bishma. He paid attention to the meaning of a particular of a, of a person's name, so he understood things about a person from their name. <coughs> Within Rameir Simcha, uh, excuse me, the word Meir itself tells about his essence. Shmo Meir, he know has Now, Rameir Simcha, what he's doing now is making a drasha on the name Meir. Simcha, and that these two names, Meir and Simcha, typify the person. Shmo Meir, Hino Asemel Shemocho Agadol Torah, Meir, Illuminator. That's that indicates his his greatness in Torah. Mefitz et Karnei Oro B'Chol Rachve Galotenu, who shines its uh, its rays of light in around the whole Golos. Od Bi Al Duto Amru Alav Gaonim Before Samim She Agadol B'Daro Keina Rashba. When he was young, the great Gaonim said that he's going to be like the Rashba in our generation. And that's exactly what happened. His book, Or Sameach, it only gives us, it doesn't give us even a tenth of his greatness in Torah. And there's all these oral traditions about his greatness in Torah. His second name, Simcha, Joy. It's a sign of his, it indicates his, his deep heart. It, it reflects his great and broad knowledge in Agadita. He's writing, uh, he, uh, the Hesper was right after a Mayor Simcha passed away. So the, so the, excuse me, the book, Meshachachma came out right after Amir Simcha passed away. It only recently came out. And brings joy to the hearts of the Darshanim. The main part is, is the way he related to people. There was a love that came from his heart to every person that he came in contact with. And even though his heart was <coughs> saturated with with uh, tamrurim. He doesn't mean the word bitterness in English has a negative connotation of somebody who's like babisana, but uh, what it means is he himself had to had to suffer bitter things because of family tragedies. As was known to those who were close to him. And especially about his 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 only daughter, um, we we mentioned that earlier. He was always open to feel the pain, the feel the tragedies, the the difficulties of everybody. And anybody who was passing through or traveling through, he accepted with with a joyous face. And he listened uh, to the, with his, with a listening ear to the, to the, uh, to the pains of others. And he would console all those who were depressed or broken. The names, the name, his very name, Meir Simcha, brings out both sides of Ramir Simcha of Davinsk, Torah and, and, and joy. Um, so uh, the, uh, we just brought uh, 
once again, five examples of uh, the uh, the off the charts kind of things about Rameer Simcha, his uh, his almost prophetic marks about remarks about uh, Berlin and Jerusalem. Uh, that one example of probably hundreds uh, or or maybe thousands, who knows, of uh, of of being able to unlock cryptic Gemaras because of his his uh, massive knowledge, he being one of the key people that was able to uncover the uh, the forgery of the Yerushalmi Kochim, uh, it just you know interpreting a dream out of nowhere and then and then Chacham Adif Minavi and uh, and I I. Uh, I just took four things out of the Sefer. There was so many beautiful things there. Uh, his language, one of the things that, uh, that is, worth, is worth reading uh, is uh, he went through all the Sparim and he collected the emotional language that Rav Meir Simcha uses as he writes about uh, Torah, as he writes about learning uh, wherever he is. Um, and so you had the humility you feel and the, the, the connection with Hashem that, that, that it comes out of his comes out of his words. Anyways, it was a schos to to do these three uh, shirim about about Rameir Simcham de Vinsk, uh, the first of the Or Sameach and Talmud Torah, the second the Meshach Achman Bitachon, and this one where we saw a number of different points that just uh, uh, showed how how outstanding he was. God willing, next week and the week after that. I would like to turn to um, one of the uh, unique, unique figures in the Torah world, Rav Yosef Rosen, who's known as the Raga Chever Gon. I just want to point out that uh, our new uh, um, uh, staff member, Rav uh, Moshe Baron, who is um, who is involved in recruiting, so he told me that he set up a website on the Ragged Shover. So God willing, I'm going to look into it and see what material he has there. The Ragged Shover is, uh, is extremely, extremely unique. We'll talk about him as a person. We'll, uh, we'll try to bring some of his, uh, uh, try to dig up some graphics of his postcards that he used to send all over the Jewish world and, uh, and talk a little bit about his, his uh, unique um, understanding of the uh, Talmud and the Rambam, and um, and so I wish you a uh, a wonderful week, and uh, about Slacharava.